Tips. Hi there! This is your Chief Marine Mate Edu at your service. Before we start, thanks for watching and please press the subscribe button and click on the notification bell. Let's begin! Hello again! This is the continuation of the fourth segment in the Part 4B series of liquefied petroleum gas carrier cargo operations. This discussion is about relic function plan and in parallel with cooling down operation. In the previous lecture, we have introduced the relic function essential usage and its basic principle of operation. Let's resume and dive into more details for better understanding. Cooling down operation has to be done first prior to any loading commencement. Tanks has to be adequately cooled down to minimize thermal stresses and excessive tank pressure when loading. The procedural method is by introducing cargo liquid into the tanks at a low and controlled rate. This is important as tanks may go into a thermal shock if it is not done properly or carefully. In this view, you will find the cooling down chart designed for your cargo tanks on board. The graph will show its average cool down rate which implies that you cannot hasten such and it, it will only lead you to a disastrous result such as structural damage, for example thermal crack or fracture as shown in the image. Controlling rate means without creating undue thermal stresses depend on the design of the containment system and are typically a maximum of 10 degrees Celsius per hour for most LPG vessel. This would be different to semi-pressurized fully refrigerated as their containment is more robust and ductile in terms of materials. However, the principal applications are just the same. The lower the cargo carries temperature, the more important the cool down procedure will become. Basically, during gassing up, an initial cooling down may have started already, or in a scenario where the vessel is from a ballast voyage and normally carry the same cargo in her previous loading. Then cooling down may in effect have started before arrival as they can utilize remaining amount if sufficient. In this animation shown, cargo can be from the terminal supply or deck storage tank or even from cargo tank itself in some cases where we use the cargo pumps to recirculate back through the top spray lines. And so whichever is the arrangement, this liquid has to be gradually introduced. Take note that the tanks in this case are warm or just close to the ambient temperature outside the ship's hull you can expect that vapors will be produced due to rapid evaporation. In this effect, such evaporation may be taken ashore through the vapor return line in the manifold assuming this has been agreed upon. Or if not, then the relic function plant will be commissioned, hence returning back the vapor to the tank as a liquid. It is very important to monitor the tank pressure, temperature, and the rate of cool down basing all the parameters involved such as your containment design, Average cooling rate chart, MARV settings, and relic function plant performance which depends on how your system was purged enough during gassing up. Cool down must continue until liquid begin to form in the bottom of the tanks. Temperature sensors play a critical role in all the key point locations such as top, middle, bottom, and tank walls or bulkhead respectively. In the case of cool down of cargo tanks for fully refrigerated, for this example propane, the pool of liquid form will be approximately negative 42 degrees Celsius in the bottom, while the top of the tank may still be about negative 20 degrees Celsius. The actual temperature gradient will depend on the size of the cargo tank, position of sprays, and in most cases the liquid that has been supplied to you which is still warmer than its refrigerated temperature. For example, propane refrigerated temperature is about negative 42 degrees Celsius, whilst what you are receiving is just maybe negative 40 degrees Celsius. Now let's go back to the main operating principles of relic function plant and all of its associated equipments. As discussed in the previous segment, we were able to determine its purpose and procedural applications. Though I have not mentioned before that behind all this condition, the fundamentals that is working and applies to all from from leaden heat to vaporization, during cooling, condensation, operation, and commissioning of relic function plant is the so-called ideal gas law equation, which states that Pb is equal to nRT, where R is the ideal constant. In theory, ideal gas are basically the atmosphere that surrounds us, and some other gases. Whilst the cargo is not actually an ideal gas, per se, nevertheless, 
it is much closer where the right formula permit is used to design your function plant in your LPG ships. We are not to dive in further into this subject as we focus only on the basic operation and application in general. So now, we resume to its main application and see its process using a simulator in this respect to see the bigger picture. So as discussed in the previous segment, we will be using the same model, wherein two-stage direct compression cycle with intercooler and a cascade combination. Meaning to say, we have a first and second state of compression and in between is an intercooler, wherein the cargo condenser is utilizing a refrigerant called R22. And at the same time, the R22 system or refrigerant system is being condensed by the seawater. So this is the same thing in the simulator model that we are going to use. Now let's assume that we have some liquid coolants left in the gassing up operation, in which case we put it in the deck storage tank on the port side. And let's just assume that we transfer it to one of your cargo tanks, which is number four, as you can see here, tank number four, that's the number. But of course, that is assuming also that in some cases, some very large gas carriers doesn't have any deck storage tank. So meaning to say you can directly put in a liquid coolant into your cargo tanks using for cooling. So in this case, we put in an enough amount of liquid into the tanks from the terminal. In this view, we will be lining one of the discharge pump and we will be utilizing it for spraying or cooling down the tanks through the liquid lines and to the condensate line so that we could utilize the top spray pipelines. Now, let's also simulate that in the manifold area, the terminal has uh, agreed to connect the vapor return line but it's only for emergency purposes, meaning to say they are requiring us to use the relic function plant. Now, take note in the uh, standard operating procedures on board ships, you have to put this in writing and notify your operations department that it's only connected for emergency purposes but they won't be receiving any vapor return. So, this has to be also uh, cleared up and at the same time noted or written in the note of protest. Of course, we will tackle this in other discussion. So as you can see, the manifold chicksan is connected on the port side alongside through the vapor line and it will be only used for emergency. And hence also these pull pieces are connected so that we could connect the number one and four system and two and three system for the vapor line, which is this one and this one. And now let's take a look at the overview of the cargo pipeline. We could see all here in top view that all the vapor lines are open, including the bulkhead bulbs. And at the same time, all the spool pieces to come on the one and four system and two and three are all interconnected. And that it goes all the way to the manifold just in case that we will be using the vapor return for the terminal. However, since we are using the relic function plant, that is just a contingency that is put in place. So now we are ready to line up the system. So in this uh, simulation, we will be using the cargo tanks where in the coolant has been loaded and utilizing one cargo main pump and lining it up through the liquid line and it will pass through the condensate line wherein we will be using the top spray and that we will be sending slowly the liquid to the top of cargo tanks number one so in this case i am opening bulbs top spray line for tank number one so meaning to say uh, it has been decided by the chief officer with the supervision of the master to start first with tank number one since Tank number one will also be the first one to be loaded when the loading of cargo commences. So this is the lineup. So in the top view, from tank number four, we will circulate or pump out the liquid all throughout the liquid line and goes to the condensate line and transfer or run the liquid slowly to the top spray line for tank number one. So let's go to tank number four and see how it looks like since we open already some of the valves in here and all we do is open the discharge valve for the cargo pumps. Now as you can see we are in tank number four and the uh, bulkhead uh, valves are open or labeling valve and we will be using in this example is the cargo pump on the port side and we'll be opening this uh, discharge valve but before we start doing liquid discharge uh, out of the tank so that we could send it to the liquid line as you can see it's open here as well and this one is open so that it can connect to the condensate line and based on the cargo pipelines it goes all the way to cargo tank number one top spray in this uh, view we need to line up also at the same time the relic function plan so that once we started the cooling down operation then we are also ready to start up and commission the relic function plan immediately 
So if you base it on the cargo main pipelines overview, the uh, layout of the pipelines, you can see that plant number one, as I'm pointing here, actually is uh, designed to uh, serve one and four system. You can just trace the line here. This is one and four system. While plant number two is designed to uh, service for system two and three. While for plant number three is actually designed to serve both uh, one and four, two and three, and uh, either of the two, it can also uh, be utilized so that uh, if you are dealing with uh, colder cargos like propane or if you are in LPG ships like ethylene, then another plant will be able to. Uh, be commissioned so that the uh, work of the uh, relic function will be capable of maintaining or uh, coping up with the relic function uh, operation. So again, as mentioned earlier, we will be using the two-stage direct compression cycle with intercooler and cascade combination. And hence, with this kind of cascade combination, we will be using a sequential methods of starting or commissioning the relic function plant. To prevent overheating, the cooling water supply to condenser should be established and the refrigerant system where pitted is started before any cargo compressors are run. Now, looking at the schematic diagram of this cargo plant number one, the R22 is laid out basically in the left side. The uh, main plant or number one plant uh, compressor system is uh, laid out on the uh, right side, as you can see here. And there's the condenser for the R22, which is the seawater. And there are the bulbs as lined up. Now, the system settings and parameters are interlocking, meaning to say you cannot start the compressor if, for example, the lubricating oil uh, level is not enough. And at the same time, you cannot run if this R22, which is your refrigerant that goes to your cargo condenser, is not running. So hence against as a sequence we have to start from the condenser R22 and then line up and once it's stabilized then we can supply the uh, refrigerant to the cargo condenser for plant number one and at the same time we have to check the oil and glycol system now the loop oil this is a reciprocating uh, compressor type now take note it has cooling system and the loop oil is actually utilized for cooling and at the same time lubricating some of the parts it's an oil free type of reciprocating uh, compressor but it has to be uh, lubricated also with some parts in it and not necessarily part of the compression so uh, you, we will have to demonstrate it to have an overview so we go to loop oil glycol system now as a general practice it is the gas engineer or cargo engineer who deals with the uh, operations of the relic function plant so basically in parallel when you are doing the uh, cooling down operation or any operations on hand the gas engineer also has its role and immediately and or automatically he or she is doing what what is the scope of his or her job responsibility so in this uh, scenario we're just gonna top up uh, some of the liquid uh, level of the low boil so in this case i'm just gonna top off a little bit on uh, low boil for uh, compression number one and also at the same time i'm gonna open some bulbs already for the cooling of the compressors so i'm just gonna open uh, one compressor plant number one for a while and then uh, i'm gonna open also the bulbs for the cooling water for the glycol so as you can see there's a glycol pump here and there's a lubrication pump here so i have started already to fill up as you can see this one is a little bit on low level but uh, we are not using number three yet we are only using cargo plant number one just to give you a simulation so assuming that this is already on just on the right level uh, middle halfway so that is okay already now uh, as you can see these bulbs are open but doesn't mean that uh, uh, the glycol is running and being cooled so hence you see in reality the compressor when at work will produce a lot of heat tremendous heat so you need to have cooling and at the same time lubrication of some of the parts so this is where the loop oil and glycol pump system is at work so now we go to the so-called cooling water and we can see here that the glycol cooler is already lined up we might as well open the valve for r22 number one condenser so that we could supply and open the overboard discharge so now this is open and this is open and we'll just run the pump for the seawater so now we have a cooling and let's go back to the boil now we have a cooling here and then we could start actually literally the gas engineer is actually uh, doing this in parallel once the cooling of the down operation has started and there is already a vaporization and pressure taking place in the tank so let's just assume that this will be started sooner or later eventually so now you can see that the glycol pump is pumping in and going out all through the compressor system 
where it cools down and takes out the heat and it goes back again while the seawater is cooling down the taken heat or extracted heat from the cargo compressor so it will be rejected here through the cooling water and goes back again and cool and goes the same cycle over and over again so this is necessary in order for you to be able to start your plant in this area now take note that you have to start also R22 before you can start the plant number one so we are basically so we are basically ready to uh, line up for, for uh, spraying the tank and hence from here from cargo tank number four we start and open the discharge valve a little bit crack open the bulkhead open so that liquid on both sides of the uh, tank will be, be pumped out equally so now we can start the pump now take note in um, operating the uh, cargo pumps you have to make sure that they are freely moving or rotating so i'll explain that later in another uh, demonstration wherein if got stuck due to some hydrate formation then uh, that has to be freed using an alcohol system anyway we are ready so we can start the pumps and it goes this way now the amperates are running and there's a discharge pressure of about 7.0 uh, bar uh, we can just control that pressure utilizing the this just bulb and it goes through here and through the condensate line so now we go to cargo pipelines and as you can see the discharge bulb for the uh, cargo tank number four pumps are uh, throttled and now the uh, liquid is running in this line going through cargo tank number one to start the top spray and so we are here in tank number one now as you can see the top spray uh, coming from the top through the uh, condensate top spray line and you could see the uh, spraying has begun and the cooling of the tanks uh, has started so uh, you will be noticing also that the pressure has come up a little bit and in this way we can now commission our relic function plant okay as we go on with the top spray on the side of the gas engineer or cargo engineer he or she is already lining up for the cargo compressor so uh, we have to start first the uh, suction side of the compressor for r22 and the discharge sides and making sure that it's going a cargo condenser so, okay uh, as you can see this is the throttle bar eventually this opens uh, depending on the liquid receiver so we can uh, start the uh, r22 pumps and it runs and you can see seawater inlet is going in and out and condensing the R22 while the compressor is running at 25% we can increase that to 50% of course it will stabilize and this one will of course automatically open for this purpose I let's open it a little bit so it's open when the level liquid of the receiver has been attained now you have a refrigerant coolant going through the cargo condenser and this time now you can of course open the inlet or suction uh, side of the compressor and make sure that the uh, discharge sides of the compressor is open this is very important you remember this is a reciprocating pump it uh, works in the principle of displacing so you have to open a discharge outlet of the compressor now you are ready of course you have to open this uh, non-return bulb and again like uh, the same thing with the liquid receiver in r22 it opens when the cargo condenser also has meet the criteria or level for the cargo condenser so this one will open the expansion bar the same with this area r22 so now we can start the pump and there you go first compression the inlet is about negative 20 at the first stage it becomes a temperature of 16 positive degrees celsius and a pressure of 21.4 bar and then at the second stage it comes out at a temperature of 33.3 uh, degrees celsius with a pressure of 4.22 so basically it has been doubled and it goes inside the cargo condenser where you have the refrigerant of r22 condensing and or uh, rejecting the uh, heat from the compressed uh, gas and what happens is that it turns into a liquid and hereby becomes a liquid and put it to the expansion valve into a bigger space wherein from high pressure to low pressure the liquid turns to its boiling point temperature which is uh, with propane it's about negative 42 degrees celsius now as you can see this is the plant number one where the condensate from the expansion valve is coming out and it goes back to this line but intentionally i line it up uh, wherein the cargo tanks number four is uh, discharging the liquid uh, using the condensate light for the top spray but as you can see uh, but as, as you can see if you trace the line they will go against each other 
So, uh, this was done intentionally for you to be able to analyze the lining up in different ways. So, in this way, uh, we could actually, what we have done the right way is that this should be open, right? And this should be lined up going through here to go to task spray to number one. And this should be closed, right? And this pull piece should be out. And hence, now, you can send back your condensate back to tank number four where you are taking out your liquid. And you can close this one as well. So we trace the line accordingly, pumping out from cargo pump. We use power for the top spray to this line, going to the liquid line uh, number one, going to the top spray of number one cargo tanks. And hence the uh, condensate return from the plant number one is through here, cannot go here because this full piece uh, has been taken out. It goes back through here and then it goes all the way to the bottom of, uh, of the cargo tanks number four, where you are taking out the liquid. So to sum it up, uh, looking at the simulation or demonstration, it's easier said than done. But in all actuality, uh, we always have to follow the standard operating procedure like pre-meeting, discussion, and pre-planning uh, with regards to any operations or prior to any operations that may take place. So meaning to say you have to coordinate, collaborate with your crew like your cars engineer and the rest of your crew members and of course through the supervision of your uh, captain and that of course everything has to be laid out accordingly and that looking at through every settings parameters and limitations this should be taken into account so that there won't be any issues or problem uh, arises so once the relative function plan in terms of the pressure and temperature in the cargo tanks for tank number one is stabilized then you can of course go ahead with the rest of the tanks until you complete all your cooling remember to follow the discharge the cooling down rate according to your uh, ship's uh, manual and that uh, using the graph as well and then uh, with this uh, you will be able to uh, stabilize everything and that meet your expectations accordingly coming up next part five loading operation as per series of lpg cargo operations <laughs>